afternoon. First things first, thank you very, very, very much for all of the questions that I've gotten. It's been absolutely fantastic uh, getting your opinions. And I've actually got quite a few uh, Space Marine chapters sent in to me to look over, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, I've been reading over them. A lot of them are really well done. A few of them go a bit too far in the fanfic direction for me. Um, but, again... Um, I've been asked quite a few times how to actually do your Space Marine chapter, how to how to do your own homebrew chapter, and that's what this is going to be about. Stream of consciousness video, as they all are, so you know. Apologies for the the ramblings of a madman that are occurring right now. So you see before you, this is a Space Marine. He's a Space Marine of the Silver Ronin. Um, not quite finished. A few things need to be touched up, as you can see on the left shoulder pad there. Um, but nearly finished. Um, he is a Space Marine of the Silver Ronin. That is my own Space Marine chapter. That is the channel's Space Marine chapter. And again, they're based off of um, Japan and, in general, uh, Samurai, Ronin, things like that, um, ninjas. So, that's what I went for, my, my aesthetic. Now, <clears throat> there are a couple of main points that I wanted to hit on when making your own Space Marine chapter. And there will be more pictures, don't worry. There are going to be a lot more pictures as we go forward. Um, I'm taking you through the pictures as sort of a... an advancing... what's the word? Um, process. So so you're going to see the, the, the paint strip away as we're going through these models, and you can see how they're going to be before the paint is even applied to them. Well, the undercoat, anyway. So... First thing I would advise anyone to do who is going to make their own Space Marine chapter is know who you're making it for. All right, You're making it for you. You are the person who is making a Space Marine chapter and it is for you. If you're making a Space Marine chapter to compare dicks with your friends or to say, hey, this is my Space Marine chapter and, and have people go, oh my god, this is really, really cool. Um, that's probably the wrong reason to make one. It is a lot more work than you think. Um, the, the Warhammer 40,000 universe and setting is huge. Ridiculously so. And you can get to the point where you're getting lost. If you make a chapter anywhere from, you know, before the Primaris came around, that is, that is a huge amount of lore you've got to contend with. A huge amount of research that you've got to do. Okay? Um, you know, even as someone who worked for the company for, for a few years... And before then, I was an absolute law hound. Like, I was all over it. Even somebody who has read most, a hell of a lot of, of Black Library books on Space Marines. Um, I still don't know everything, you know? And I still get things wrong. Um, my chapter was founded in the in the uh, Cursed Founding. <coughs> and they were not originally um, Silver Ronin. They were actually a successor chapter of the White Scars called the Silver Sabres. And I actually picked a, a chapter that actually appeared in the Demon Co in the uh, in the Chaos Demons Codex a few um, editions back, um, and the planet that they are from is called Merc Mercuria. It is a ice world, and it is nearly eternal night there. And the chapter was wiped out on the planet of Vopsis to almost a single man, almost. Uh, basically, not actually no, it was to a single man. It was to, it was to one last marine left standing. And that last marine had to rebuild the chapter. And that actually happened. That was in the Demon Codex. Um, that actually happened. It's in law. And that's all they said about the chapter. And so I built up my story of my chapter around that one marine. You know, where did he come from? How badass was he? Because basically, he, he defeated this demon incursion on his own by rallying the people of the planet to fight it off. Which is incredible when you think about it. Um, but I always thought it was a bit unrealistic that he did that on his own. And so the chapter is very has very close ties to the Grey Knights. Okay, because I have a lot of Grey Knight models, so I can I can interchange them and use them with with this chapter. And of course, they're very samurai. They're very honor bound. They 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 do they are very attracted to impossible causes, that kind of thing. Very good duelists too. So that's the kind of thing you've got to think about when you're making your own Space Marine chapter. Number one, who you're making it for, and number two, right? What kind of a game are you making it for? All right. I'll get into the, 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 the lore aspects of what's going on later on, but what kind of game are you making it for? 
Warhammer 40,000 comes in several distinct flavors, from narrative play to matched play to tournament play, anything and anything in between. If you're making a chapter for narrative play, you have a lot more wiggle room. Uh, my my custom chapter is made for narrative play. It's not made for um, it's not made for match play. It just isn't, and, and you'll see that in a minute with with, with some of my uh, with some with the, with the way that certain units are made up. I have a lot of Grey Knight weaponry in there because I love Grey Grey Knight weapons. Um, I have a lot of um, units that don't make any sense in terms of the rules, but they look cool. You know that sort of a thing. So who are you making it for? If you're making it for tournament play and match play, then you need to be not codex compliant, because that's boring and uh, being just an ultramarine. Well, you can be if you want to. Um, but what you need, most definitely, if you're creating a chapter for matched play, is for it to be tabletop legal. Alright, so you're going to have to get yourself a codex, make yourself... And it sort of hampers how much you, uh, of creative freedom you have when you do that. That's why I haven't done it. Um, you know, you have to take certain chapter tactics, you have to take certain warlord traits, you have to take certain things in your army that, that need to be there, and, and only certain things are troops and certain things are elites and all this other stuff you've got to think about. Um, so knowing who you're making your chapter for, number one, right? Ideally, it's you. <clears throat> and number two, knowing where your chapter is going to be played. I will tell you right now, and, and, and the marketing of this video is how to get your chapter approved by Games Workshop. And what I mean by that is you can walk into a Games Workshop and play your chapter right out of the box without anyone saying anything, you know, nasty about it or whatever, okay? So, that comes in two forms. The first form, right, is respecting the law, all right? So if you want your chapter to go into a games workshop or any sort of official hobby store and be and be oh that's really cool oh that's that's really nice I'll play against that you want people to say that it needs to respect the law okay so having primarchs that are dead come back and lead your chapter obviously is going to lead to ridicule people are very protective over the setting they're very protective over the law as well they should be um, and so they're going to say hey that's bullshit like how the fucking hell are you are you doing that that's, that's ridiculous okay. Um, you know, know the limits of what you can do. So, uh, if you want to really impress people, know what the foundings are. You know, know know what what different foundings happened, right? Know, know um, how many other chapters your your parent legion or chapter spawned, right? All these things you need to know, and you need to know what's going on in the Imperium around about the time that your chapter is founded and during the time that your chapter is actually operating. Because then you can insert your chapter into those conflicts and they can actually be there relatively easy. For instance, say you have a Blood, An Blood Angel successor chapter, it only makes sense that they were at the Devastation of Baal, right? Because everyone was there, right? Why weren't you there if you were a Blood Angels, if you're a Blood Angel successor? Um, if you have an Imperial Fists a successor chapter and the last war protocol was activated in the War of the Beast, why weren't you at the War of the Beast? Were you not founded yet? If you were founded at the time, then you should have been at the War of the Beast. You know, your chapter should have been there. Um, so all these things you have to think about, and it can really impress people if you know your stuff, if you know, if you know exactly why and how your chapter was at certain places and why they were doing certain things. Um, that's number one. Do not disrespect the law. Um, it will get you ridiculed. People will not want to play against your army. Um, I've seen, you know, armies of, say, you know, uh, My Little Pony figurines, things like that, you know, it's it's funny, but no one's going to want to, no, no serious 40k player is going to want to play with you. If you're looking for, and you can do whatever you want with your models, by the way, you know, but if you want to play in a games workshop, or you want to play at a hobby club, and you want to have your models taken seriously, and people to pick them up and go, ooh, this is great, look, who, who's this guy, right? Know your stuff, respect the law, and operate within it. It takes a lot more skill to operate within the law as it exists than it does to just make up your own bullshit and hope that it sticks. Okay? Go and do some reading. It's very interesting. Go and do up some reading on the Space Marines. Go and do up some reading on their foundings. Things like that. It'll be a lot of fun and you'll be well respected for it in your own community as well. Knowing who your chapter is, where they come from, and how they fit into the larger mythos of the 140,000 universe. Okay? That's number one. That's number one thing. Of the, of the two things that we're going to mention here. Alright. 
The second one is more to do with rules. Okay? So, if your chapter breaks a few rules, like mine does here, this is an assault interceptor. But why does he have a Grey Knight helmet? Again, he's not quite finished. But why does he have a Grey Knight helmet? Well, he has a Grey Knight helmet because they, they were they were allotted uh, Grey Knight weaponry because they have a very, very, very close tie to the Order Malleus and the Grey Knights. They actually have Order Malleus Inquisitors within their chapter, who are operating within their chapter. You know, they have a, they have a flaming sword there because on Mercuria, they have um, technology that can actually give them flaming phase swords that can cut through almost anything. This is balanced in the game, so if you're going to make your own rules, make sure they're balanced. Make sure that they are fair. And the best way to do this is to, number one, know, know, know your codex, your original codex. You know, So for me, it's Grey Knights and Primary Space Marines. Know your codex. Number two, know the game. So, so know, know the rules of the game, 9th edition. Know, know what, what the current meta is. And number three, underpower your rules. Okay? Because trust me, you love your Space Marine chapter. You love your army, right? So whatever you make is going to be way overpowered. So always try and go for the lowest common denominator. Always try to make them as underpowered as possible. All right? If, and try and make them as close to the original chapter as you can with only one or two minor tweaks. I had one guy back in the day who created an awesome chapter who had really close ties to the Death Watch. And so basically every sergeant in his company uh, was a death, had the Death Watch ammunition. That was it. That's the only rule he had. And it was just completely fantastic. Um, on mine, it's a bit more in depth. So we've got different kinds of weaponry in there that, that isn't codex, you know, normal. And we also have uh, a rule uh, which means that when we arrive from Deep Strike, we charge on 3d6, not 2. Basically, that's it. When we arrive from Teleport, Teleport Strike, we charge 3d6, not 2. That's, which is powerful, but it's not game breaking in any, any way, shape, or form. Okay. Um, all of my all of the points of, of, of the codex that I'm making, they're all a lot more expensive than normal Space Marines for this reason. They've got specialist weaponry and they can they can charge 3D6 when they teleport in. Okay? So make your codex balanced. Make your rules balanced. Try and make them as close to the normal rules as humanly possible. Alright? That's that's the best way to do it. As close to the normal rules as humanly possible. Is how I would go about things. So those are the main points, the absolute main points that I wanted to make on, on the Space Marine chapters, on making your own Space Marine chapter. So I'm going to take you through a few of the, few of the units now, just so you can have a look at what I've, I've been doing. This is a normal Space Marine intercessor, as you can see, um, not quite finished, needs to be touched up in little, bit, little places, um, but that is the normal colour scheme. So I wanted to go for a blue and silver colour scheme. I really love the colour scheme of the Astral Knights. Have you ever seen that colour scheme? I wanted to go for something very, very similar to that. And so that's what I did. I, I made myself a, an Astral Knight. Um, a little bit different to the Astral Knight, but they're, they're, they're very, very similar. Um, the symbol of the chapter is... I, I went for the White Scars one with the sword through it, essentially. And it's blue and, not, it's blue and white, not red and white. And I will get it on there at some point. Um, but decals cost a lot of money. You know, you know that's how it goes. So obviously here you have a this is a, a, an assault intercessor. Um, so the the law of the chapter is that they are given aren't they? again he's not finished he needs his eye touching up and a few bits and bobs. Um, but the law of of the chapter is that they are very close ties to the Grey Knight. So they have Grey Knight weaponry, Grey Knight armaments, things like that that are gifted to them um, at certain levels of their of their of their time within the, the Silver Ronin. So a helmet is is a distinction of a veteran. Who's who's fought in in many campaigns? You know, this is a guy who has a lot of kills to his name. Um, what a blade, a longer blade like what he has here, that is also a symbol of, of a veteran who has many, many, many kills to his name. Um, uh, ones who aren't quite that, that veteran-like, they will have no helmet, for instance, or, or or a normal space marine helmet. They could have one false halberd or a false falchion there. Um, the 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 halberds and the hammers are generally reserved for veterans as well. So this is just how, how the how the the chapter works. So when you see it on the tabletop, they don't act as anything other than than assault intercessors with force weapons, essentially. Um, 
But what I would say is, if I wanted to play this as an, uh, an, a normal game, if someone said, I'm not playing that, that's your own rules, and they're going to be bullshit, I'll say, okay, fine. If you would like to read over them, maybe we can play. And if you don't want to read over them, I can just play them as normal assault intercessors. So this would, would proxy as a chainsword, you know, for instance. And that's fine. So I would suggest when you're making your own changes, make them so that they're easily interchangeable with stuff that's actually in the codex. That would be a really, really clever thing to do. So you can see the back of him here. I really love the way the insult and intercessors are all running forwards. They're all, you know, the way that I, I photograph these picks out a load of flaws I'm now seeing that you can't see normally without we're at a really high speed camera, not a really high quality camera. But there you go. So this is a blade guard veteran. He's not finished. Um, he's nowhere near finished. Actually, he's got loads, loads, and loads of work to do. Um, but this is uh, essentially like the first one I'm painting to get the color scheme down and how it's going to look on a, on a blade guard veteran. Um, but as you can see there, they have the hood. So the hoods and the and the helmets, almost all of the marines in this force are helmeted and hooded. And that is simply because uh, they, if they are from Mercuria, they have a a flaw in in the, not in their gene seed but in the in the makeup that they, where they've mutated. The people there have mutated. Um, to have all black eyes, basically the, the the eyes that pull in a lot of light, and so these guys were don't just wear psychic hoods because they're all psychers, but they wear face masks too and helmets to dim the light of wherever they're fighting to make sure that they're they're not getting blinded or or disoriented by the light. All of the starships that these guys are on are all powered down lighting wise, and um, to give them um, more comfort as they're walking around, and. Um, the, the 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 flaming swords of Mercuria, they're flaming because it's a it's a pitch black world. So when they're fighting the monsters and, and and mutants that are on the world, they need to know where they are. They need to know where their allies are, and so they they use these the flaming swords on the world. Again, nowhere near finished, but a good look of of how these guys are. Um, so the guys with uh, with helmets are normally Marines recruited from Mercuria. Um, the guys without the helmets are play are people re are marines recruited from Vopsis, and Vopsis is a very uh, well. It was the world devastated by that uh, demon invasion that we talked about a few well, about ten minutes ago, and those marines do not have the mutations that the Mercuria marines do. They have normal eyes, and so they can go without helmets. And as a mark of respect for Mercuria marines, a lot of them go without helmets. They take the risk of going without helmets. Just to respect those who were born on this feral twin world that just that's just next door to them, so because they're normally the more veteran guys, the ones from Mercuria. And here's the other side. So Blade Guard veterans, the entire army is basically built around Blade Guard veterans um, because they are just the coolest models ever, and the Blade Guard work really well protecting my my chapter master. And as you as you will see in a moment. Um, this guy is not chapter master. He is a converted uh, aggressor, I think. Um, but he, these guys protect the main librarian, the main storms here. Uh, so they go around and they slaughter the the big old demons. These guys that are, are caught, but they're, they're basically made to keep demons stationary so that they can be finished off by the rest. So they're in big bulky armor. You know, they're basically terminators. They go in there with the with the librarian. And they dampen down any demonic effects. They, they they deny the witch. They go in there. They make sure that 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 places are clear of demons. Or if there's a particularly big demon, like a, even a demon primarch or a or a great demon, they will go in there. They will dampen down his presence. They will keep him locked in, uh, with their with their weapons and with their psychic might, so that the champions of the chapter can get in there and tear this thing down and kill it and banish it back to the warp. So he's the the uh, the bodyguard of the librarian. Which, uh, which I have. Um, he's nearly done. He's nearly done. So, I'll show that off at some point. There you go. And here is the chapter master himself. So, the chapter master is called Gallus Saito. So he is a he is a Japanese name and a, and a Latin name. Um, the the sword in his right hand is actually Fireblade. And if anyone who's read any books of the Horus Heresy will know that Fireblade is a Fulgrim sword in the Horus Heresy. And that sword was essentially uh, given to a Chaos champion by the name of Julius K. Sauron. Uh, heavily tainted by Chaos at this stage. Because Fulgrim um, dropped the sword 
Uh, it was his original sword, his untainted sword, before he got the Blade of the Leia that then corrupted him. So he gave this to Julius K. Sauron, um, who was using it for a long, 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 long time. Uh, eventually, he was slain, though, by an, by an unnamed Space Marine champion. I have, I have said in my lore that that unnamed Space Marine champion was this chapter master, Gallus Saito. And the, I, the, the Silver Ronin actually have a very good relationship with the Iron Hands, having fought with them for a long, long time. And, of course, their Primarch, Ferris Manus, created Fireblade. He made Fireblade. And so the Silver Ronin brought this sword, you know, its tainted sword, back to the Iron Hands, who sanctified it, broke it apart, remade it, took off all of the all of the Chaos stuff, you know, so you can see it's an Imperial sword there. They gave it back as a sign of respect, saying, we don't want this. This is the sword that was wielded by the guy who killed our Primarch. This is yours, and we name it Amarakis, which in low Gothic, well, in high Gothic, uh, I, th I think it I think it means blade of redemption or, or redemption from war or redemption from yeah, it, it, it's it's something like that when I when I try to when I try to go go through it in Latin so Amarakis so so that that is the blade it is actually Fulgrim sword is why it's so large um, it can be it can be wielded by if if your psychic power is is, is high enough it can be wielded by a psyker in one hand uh, this guy is obviously a very 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 powerful psyker and. He has an offhand weapon too, in in in, in his in his force katana. So one gets knocked out of his hand. You can see it there, the, the flame coming off the sword. It's nowhere near finished, and you can see that what I see is the piece de resistance of this of this chapter master in in my own estimation. Um, you can see it here. Um, there there is the force sword on the other side. But that, so that is the scabbard of Fireblade. And you can even see the Emperor's Children a wing on it as well. Alright, so there's lots of different parts and lots of different models all placed on this one character. And I will get I have bought some chains to go around that scabbard so they're actually attached to his back. So that that's gonna be him. That, that is the chapter master of the Silver Ronin. And that is essentially what I'm trying to get you guys to, to think about. We want to be going in-depth with your lore. We want to be going in-depth with who these guys are, why they're around, what they're doing, why they're doing it, respecting the lore as it stands, making sure that your force fits. That will make sure that any hobby store and any Games Workshop will allow you to play it in the store as long as you can proxy things. Now, number one, you respect the lore, okay? And, 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 and as an addendum to that, if no one asks about your lore, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Just, just give them little snippets of your lore. And they'll want to know more. We're all nerds. We all want to know more. I want to know more. Right? Everyone's a writer who's in there. Trust me. They will want to know more. Um, so, make sure it fits the law. Okay? It respects the law. Number two. Okay? Make sure your rules are balanced if you're using homebrew rules. If your hobby store... This is the stickler. A hobby store may not may not let you use the, 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 the homebrew rules, but they normally leave up to your opponent to decide. A games workshop definitely may not want you to use your own your own rules. I did when I ran a store. I allowed people to use their own rules. I would ask to see them first. I would read them and I would reread them and I'd make sure that I understood exactly what they were going for. And if and if they were balanced enough, I would let them play it. If they weren't that balanced, I would work with them to make them balance and then they can play the rules not everyone's like that of course some people are very sticklers they're very like it's either it has the codex is written or you don't play with it at all you don't even you're not even allowed to play your forge world stuff that kind of a thing that's fine that's their store you know like 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 you 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 honestly cannot go on on a, on a, and say you know it, it's 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 not up to them it is up to them it's their store um I, I, I was told by Games Workshop I was not allowed to have any Forge World in my store. I had to sneak it in. I had to I had to get it in under the radar to tell my my customers that they could use it. And I was still getting stick when I went to pubs that that, that, that hey you you're not letting people use that in your store. I got shit online from like actual uh, fan groups. I was named in these fan groups, but they were coming after me saying you know, you're not you're letting people use Forge World in your store. I'm, I. Preaching to the choir, dude. Right? So not every single not every single store will let you play with your own rules. Reasonable ones will. Okay? But they'll want to see that they're balanced first. 
Okay, and if you can't do that, when you go to one of these official stores, just make sure number three, your army can be proxied easily. Okay, um, you know, collect it so that you know. I have two lists basically in my army. I have uh, a nearly all intercessor list with a few blade guard veterans. You know, easy. You know, because you can easily proxy them, and and my salt intercessors, and that's it, right? And I have other other lists where I'm playing in a in a narrative play when I know the other player is really interested in my army, where I've got all of the bells and whistles. You know, I've got the, the librarian and his his bodyguard. I've got the chapter master. I've got this and that. Okay, so those are my three main pieces. Okay, we learned a bit about my army. So what do you think? It was a good advice. Or should I go fuck myself? I'm probably going to do it anyway because I'm single. But, you know, it's good advice or, you know, it was, was it pie in the sky talk? You tell me. And please keep sending in your chapters. I have emailed you all back now. You've all got like an extensive almost essay. Um, there will be, now that you, if you've stuck to this part of the, of the video, there will be a Patreon going up. I ask that you only pay into the Patreon what you can. And if you think that my channel is worth the money, then give what you want. You know, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> but I'll see you guys later. Have a good one and uh, happy gaming. See ya.